Howdy, I'm charting songs for a session, and I wanted to show you all how I write a national number chart. We've got three songs for this artist named Mikhail Buck. He's a North Carolina guy, fully independent, has a great regional following, plays shows uh, around the East Coast, and, and actually goes out to Texas and plays there as well. A really good dude, great hunter, which I, I've learned a lot from him. <laughs> I'm a new hunter, so I'm kind of a novice and really enjoy it though. I want to chart this song of his, and you'll notice as we listen that it's kind of bluegrassy. My guess, since I'm in the band, and since they're having me lead this session, that they're wanting to do more of a full band version of these songs. I think we have steel on the session as well. There's going to be bass, drums, acoustic. Yeah, I think that's it. Bass, drums, acoustic, steel, and electric. And they asked me to lead the session. Every session in Nashville has a leader. And what that means is that the producer or the songwriter or the artist or whoever put the session together has somebody in the band that they want to lead. Um, leading a session involves managing communication between the control room, which is the producer, engineer, writer, artist, and the band, the tracking room. Sometimes leaders get to call their own band. Most of the time they have one or two players in each chair that they want you to call. Almost always. I get called to lead a session and then they say, you know, could you call one of these two people for drums? Could you call one of these two people for bass? Could you call one of these two for acoustic? And if there are too many of those chairs where we don't get one of their two desired players, we'll often move the session, you know, unless it's for some indie artist coming from out of town or something. So anyway, I'm going to start uh, writing this chart. I don't know what key we're in. The title is called Her Again. The other two songs that I charted were just acoustic and vocal. This is how I write a national number chart. One, two, three, four. That's our pace. So. I can see an old motion like walking through a thousand different daydreams. Five chord. I can already kind of tell what the shape of the song is going to be now. Gave my memory spent. Thinking how I love to hear the Blue Jay sing. All right. It's got me feeling like this highway. I'm never knowing where the road ends. Four chord. And it reminds me that I never came One, home. Leads me right five, back to her again. One. Ain't your beauty in a heartbreak. Okay, that's a chorus, four chord. Whiskey just won't let you taste. Back to the one. And there's something about memory. Five chord. Four. So just don't raise. One. Ain't no getting around a sad goodbye. Four. If the heart don't want me. One. Ooh, five over seven, six minor. And it reminds me that I never came home and leave me right back to her again. Do, 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 do. Okay, I'm going to stop and show you what I have so far. Again, I don't know what key we're in but our intro is four bars of one. Our verse, you see those dots that I put in the middle of the page? I'm, those are phrase dots. I'm using those to show how long a phrase is. So the verse is four bars, one, one, five, five, and then the next phrase of the verse is five bars. He hangs out on that five chord for an extra bar, and then there's two more bars, one, and then the phrase resets on the second line of the verse, where we have 1144 and then 1511. And that's just sort of a shorthand natural way of saying what the numbers are. So each number here represents one bar until we get to the chorus. You'll notice that the chorus is 4411, 5411, then 44, and then here we get one split 5 over 7. That's two fast beats of each chord. Six minor, and then there was a quick 5 over 7 for one beat, back to the 1, to a 5, two bars of 1. And then he sang a pickup into um, the turnaround. Do, 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 that sort of thing. So let's pick it up. Right there. I'm going to call that turn. Back up just a hair. Leave me right back to her again. One, two, three, four. One, two, 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 three, two, four. Two, 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 five. Two, 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 four. Two, 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 one. Oh, five or seven. Six minor. Four, five, one. Comes verse two. 
and then the thoughts keep crashing by just like the waves. Five. Five. Let's see if this I is a five bar phrase as well. Her forever. Never promised her I'd stay. Nope. It's hard to paint away I'm feeling now. I can only tell the story from the end. It reminds me that I never came home to leave one, me two, right back to four, her again. One, two, three, four. But ain't the beauty. All right, and then he, then he does that pick up into the chorus. So notice, when I'm writing a chart like this, I, I can write a chart, most songs, that I'm going to chart for sessions that I lead or that I'm going to chart for overdubs I do here. I can chart them in one fell swoop without pausing or anything. It, it's kind of rare that I have to stop and think, wait, what is that? Here, this is a great example of why I don't use repeats when I'm writing a chart, typically. Because when we get to the second verse, everything is back to a four bar phrase. There's no extra bar of five in this second phrase of verse two, like there was in verse one. So I don't want to put repeats and then have to do like a first time only out here and then, you know, or actually it'd be over this third bar of five in that phrase. And, you know, there's also something to be said for the players of just being able to read the chart down and not needing to use repeats and codas and all this stuff. I know that's typical of normal music, right? <laughs> if I were on a movie set or playing in the pit for some theater performance, or if I played on Broadway or something, I'd have charts that were pages long and out on this huge stand and I'd be reading my way through it. I'm not a great sight reader as far as that goes, but here I always like getting a chart when someone else is leading and it's just straight down and there's no repeats and there's no DS coda thing or whatever. I mean, I can read that stuff, but it just makes things easier. So let's get in on this in next chorus. Whiskey just won't let you taste. And there's something about a memory. Five, four, smoke just don't raise. Ain't no getting one, around a sad goodbye. If the heart don't want me. And it reminds me that I never came home, it leads me right back to her again. Ooh, it's gonna be a tag here. And it reminds me that I never came home and leads me right back to her again. All right, nice, short, sweet song. So, here's the rest of my chart. Notice how chorus two does look the same as chorus one, except there's another reason why I didn't want to write repeats. Except when we get to this last uh, phrase, you can see my phrase dots. I'm kind of using them for when the vocal resets the phrase. In the last four bars of our second chorus, we do this walk down to a tag, and then he hits a diamond. And really, this is probably where the outro starts, even though I kind of started on a new line. But up here, you know, it's just one five and then a double one, and then this long turn. And I'm assuming that's going to be a solo of some kind. It might be pedal steel. They might be wanting to overdub fiddle. Um, I've worked for this artist before, Mikhail, and I think he has a pretty rock and fiddle player in his touring band. And so he likes to cut things in the studio so that they can play them live easily and, and will leave room for fiddle. And I don't know if he actually has his live player come in and overdub or if we use one of the fiddle players in town. Janae Fleener is on most records that I play on that have fiddle, and she is incredible. Anyway, this is how I write a number chart, and the beauty about this as a roadmap for us to play song, the song is that we can change keys and nothing changes on the chart. It's just what we call at the top. That sounded to me, I don't have perfect pitch, uh, that sounded to me like C shapes, but capoed up. So I would guess it's in D or E, maybe E flat. This is the this is the roadmap. I'm gonna go to my session, hand this and uh, the other two, these three charts to the producer and say, here you go, and we'll, they'll make copies. And when we listen to these work tapes in the control room as a band, we will listen with this in hand, read it down as we go, and then 
people will toss out ideas. We'll ask the producer. I've got questions for the producer. Are we staying acoustic led? Are we just trying to do a full band version of this sort of style? Is it still acoustically focused? I mean, since we have bass and drums, I'm assuming that it's going to fill out in the choruses at least, you know. There are certain artists that immediately come to mind that do that really well. Tom Petty is one of them. As far as Nashville goes, Tim McGraw, Eric Church, Luke Bryan, Dirk Bentley. So again, we'll get we'll get a few cues from the producer as to what direction we're pointing at. Hey, we're going to make it an Eric Church thing. Well, that makes me think that it's going to be somewhat tough without being like super distorted and there's going to be some sort of left of center kind of wacky thing that gets done usually in electric world but you know he's had harp on some of his songs and it sounded really awesome if you ever want to practice doing this sit down with a song that you know if you know what key it's in well you know that's the one chord and then you can count right like if this were in c these are all c chords the five would be g C, D, E, F, G, one, two, three, four, five. Four is F. We go down one. Five over seven would be G over B. Six minors, A minor, G over B, one. And those, that's the whole whole chart. Then if, uh, if, it's, if it feels a little low to sing with the artist, maybe we go up a half step, half step up from whatever that is. Well, again, nothing changes. That's the beauty of these. And I think when people... When people see these and they're like, whoa, that just looks like Greek, I kind of think they're just making it out to be more than it is. It's really a redneck shorthand way. <laughs> it, it involves the most basic major scale harmony to write one of these out. They're, they're a great roadmap, and they leave everything open for players to spontaneously create certain parts on the fly. And sometimes, in a work tape, a... Uh, writer will play an intro hook and they the cue for that is then for me to say okay they want that hook they just want it done on electric with with all the dynamics and vibe or aggression or effects that that it sounds like they're going for you know and and that's communicated on the session as well here if you remember at the beginning of this long turnaround he sang do 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 he sang a pickup in this bar before that turn so whoever takes that, whether that's electric or steel, or maybe we leave it open for fiddle, like I was saying, that is probably the melody he wants us to at least start with in those first couple of bars, and then maybe sort of veer off into more of a solo thing. So anyway, we'll see how this goes. I think it'll be cool. It's going to be a good session. I like the producer. I like this artist. I've worked with them a lot. It's going to be a great band. Players are great. But yeah, this, this is just one of those things that I do and that I encounter every time I work. I'm, I'm reading a chart for a song. I'm playing guitar on a song. I've got all these mental notes, like, well, our intro was down, and then the verse, this is probably empty. Maybe I sneak in in the back half. The chorus is probably where bass and drums really establish a groove, and, and I'm going to play something on the low end that's more rhythmic and out of the way of the vocal. This turnaround, don't know who that's going to be yet. I don't need to practice anything. We'll come up with something when we go play it. Verse 2 probably sucks back down. Back half of verse 2. Another slight gear shift. Next chorus is up. Tag. All the way. We're up all the way till we hit this diamond. And since we have a full band, we might not even hit that diamond. That's a diamond when you just hold it. Zing, two, three, four. And it's like a whole note in 4-4 four, four time. But you can play a diamond on a chart in 6-8, and then it's, it's just the length of a bar, basically. Uh, it just means you hold it. And you use that to either get out of the way of a of a vocal hook or to help decrescendo into a section that's that's down. I see these two diamonds so close to each other and only four bars. If this is meant to get out of the way of the vocal and then we're we're back in for four bars and then another diamond, I would say maybe play through that and let the vocal be over it. It's the home stretch of the song. Or if we if we suck back down to an intro vibe where we weren't all in, then maybe we do that, but then it's only four bars. Maybe it's a little longer. Maybe it's uh Maybe it's this again. We'll see. Well, I don't know what's going to happen. All these, all these things kind of stick out to me as I, as I write the chart. So I'll have more videos like this, how to write these charts. You know, that was part of how I learned entire records. The first thing I would do is write a number chart for every song on the record. I think one of the last ones I did that for, I was doing that when I was out on the road and was deciding, okay, I'm going to step away from this gig and I'm going to tell everybody that I do sessions now, even though I had like one or two sessions a month 
maybe, and they were overdubs of one song and hardly paid anything. <laughs> I, I started charting entire records and learning every single guitar part. The one that I remember doing at the very end was John Mayer's Born and Raised. I literally, literally learned every guitar part on that record. The finger picking acoustic, all the electric stuff, the rhythm parts. I matched tones with it. What does, what sounds like a Strat, what sounds like a hollow body. You just, you learn so much by doing that. If you really use your ear to zero in on playing the exact same thing that you're hearing and you play it in context, that's a huge deal because you hear how it works and why it works. When you learn these isolated licks kind of off in the middle of nowhere, you get, like I was saying before in a different video, you get all the athleticism, all the, all the technicality of it with no context. It's like you want it to be a tool, but you don't really know how or where it works. I just think learning songs top down, you know, first of all, if you're if you're learning them on records where you really like the playing and there's a high level of musicianship, you're gonna learn a lot more about rhythm guitar, like how to be creative. That's the key for me. That is my absolute bread and butter. When I get called to play rhythm guitar, it's not gonna be just uh I'm not just playing bar chord. I'm coming up with something cool. You know, what, whatever, like you can figure something out. And that's, I think that's the biggest hump to get over is to get from that point of like just strumming chords, which is what everybody thinks of when they think rhythm guitar. Well, everybody outside of like, I don't think that anymore because my livelihood depends on me, not just, not just strumming, you know? And, you know, I, I make all these statements and I think they're general rules. That's, that's a rule that, again, we break. Sometimes I am just supposed to strum real simple, you know? Approaching things with creativity in mind first. Seeing, seeing these numbers and seeing that, like, these are, these are very loose guidelines. Like, there's a million things I could play over each one chord here. And it all depends on what the rest of the band's doing. Depends on what the vocal's doing. Depends on what section of the song we're in, right? So we'll, we'll do some more of this, and uh, I will see you all later. I gotta get to a session.